Howdy doody. Welcome back to the ranch. My name is Mick. This is my 1966 International Harvester 1200A pick -em up truck. If you're not familiar with this old gal, we've gone through a couple different things with it. Brought it home as a non-runner from the last time I was on the road in 1986. Rear end was completely locked solid, wouldn't even roll. Got that freed up, got it in my driveway, got it running. Now we need to get it driving and stopping. Master cylinder's completely locked solid, and in order to get to the point that it's at right now, we gotta fix that. Stick around. All right, at the end of the last video, I apologize because I didn't show me filling up the oil system because I didn't have a uh, filter in stock and it wasn't gonna be in for a couple of days. And I joked about showing it at the beginning of the next video. However, I am gonna do that mainly because I wanna show you this one thing. This is the original oil canister off of the truck here. I was just cleaning it up because it was caked with grease and I just thought it was so cool that I think the grease was so heavy on this, the oil was so heavy on this, that it actually protected the original factory sticker on it. I mean, it looks brand new, but that is original from 1966. It's just wild how something like that can last this long. So I cleaned it up a little bit just so I could show you. I thought that was a really fun little piece of history there. So all we're going to do here is grab our filter, which is a Wix 51156 for these BG241 engines. All it is here, they give you a couple gaskets. This is all it is. You just plop this in the canister, throw it up there. I like to, typically I pre-fill my filters just so there isn't any room for error. And uh, with these canister styles, I don't know if, let me know if you guys do anything special to keep the oil in it to pre-fill it, but with the bolt at the bottom, it'll all drain out. So I don't pre-fill these and it, I don't know. It, I don't think it's a, really a big deal, but uh, anyway, I'm gonna pop this in, screw it up there, and then we'll fill this thing with oil. Then we'll move on to the brakes. All right, now that the filter's on, we're good to fill this up. And of course, we're gonna be using the classic Rodola T4. Rodola for all your rotten projects. So these BG241 engines take seven quarts, including the filter, I believe. And that should be about one and three quarter gallon. Uh, lucky for me, I have these one gallon jugs left over from another oil change from before, can't remember when. Uh, and it's about a gallon and a half. So what I'm gonna do is dump these in, maybe a little spritz from that, that uh, five gallon jug and then start her up, let it all drain to the bottom, check it, and go from there. I'm just gonna fill it up with these and see where we're at. If you don't have one of these big old farm funnels, get one. They are very convenient. Oh, this is T5 actually. Well, so we might be mixing a little bit, but that's all right. I'm not gonna run this oil in here for too long. Just because of the state of the old oil, I'm gonna run this for a little bit and then drain it, change the filter again, just so I can have an idea what the general health is of this engine. Because the oil that was in there, if you remember, was full of fuel, just in terrible, terrible shape. Ooh. You know what I'm gonna do, actually? I changed my mind. I'm gonna throw some Marvel Mystery Oil in there because it says on here that you can replace up to 20% of your crankcase oil with this as an additive. So, and I was just about 20% short. So I'm gonna fill up the remaining 20% with this. See what it does, who knows. Just throwing in a mixture of whatever we want. You call that a concoction, science. Bill by the science guy. Run 
running like a sewing machine. All right, let's get started on brakes. The front wheel first, because this is going to be the easier of the four. Now on these old internationals, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, the uh, lug nuts are actually on the driver's side, the reverse thread, and on the passenger side, they're standard, which is kind of a quirky little fact. So you're actually going to go to the right, righty Lucy for these. Now I had this one off before because I wanted to see how the brakes were on the front. The brakes were in decent shape. Remember, I already saw the ones on the rear. I know those are bad. So I'm going to reuse some of the parts on the, uh, on the front, and I think uh, I'll be able to get away with that, and it shouldn't be an issue. God, these are heavy. I already had the cotter pin out of here to look at this. It was just this one that I looked at. I haven't looked at the other side yet. Okay. Washer and bearing, which are good. I'm going to reuse those. I'm just going to re-grease them. They should be fine. I'm going to reuse this. By the way, finding drums for the, for the front are pretty easy for the rear unobtainium. I thought I was going to be able to buy new ones and I don't think I'm going to be able to. So we'll get more into that later. Pretty standard, pretty simple. In order to refresh these, all you want to do is take it apart, put your new hardware on, and that's really all there is to it. I got new wheel cylinders just because they were cheap for the fronts. So I'll remove those and replace them new. I'm going to keep the pads because they still got some life left on them. Uh, they're pretty easy to replace when they are completely worn down. And uh, I think I'm reusing the springs on the front as well. Or no, maybe new springs on the front, but I'm reusing the adjuster on the bottom. Other than that, you're just going to soak everything down with brake clean to get all the uh, excess dirt and grime and brake dust off. And that's really all there is to it. So. Uh, again, the fronts are a little more simple than the back, so I'm going to knock these out real quick, real quick. I'm not a great brake drum mechanic, so it might take me a little bit longer than most. Plus, I don't have those cool tools. I just use a screwdriver and some vice grips. So I'm going to get to work on these, and then we'll move on to the back. Hey, <laughs> whoops, cart before the horse. I took this all apart and realized all I'm really, all I, my previous self was really planning on replacing was the uh, wheel cylinder. So I could have left everything on and just sprayed it down with brake cleaner. But uh, hey, practice and uh, you guys got to see how it comes apart. But all the original parts are going back on. The only thing I'm replacing here is this wheel cylinder. But uh, now that we're at this place, um, I need to get this soft line off. And in order to do that, it's been on here an awfully long time. So I'm going to put heat on both ends. In order to do that, if you're going to do that, make sure you cut your hose ahead of time. Because uh, if you don't, it'll blow up in your face. Ask me how I know. Anyway, so we'll take our snips here. Cut one end, that end I'll just let fly. Okay, and we're gonna start to put some heat here. Soak her down with a little bit of schmutz. Can you see this? Oh, you probably can't even see this. Take two. Ooh, my other side is turning, so I need to get back there. Don't wanna break those lines. Okay, so I gotta take this apart, so heat on both of these lines, all three of these lines, and then schmutz and repeat. Okay, seven sixteenths. Oh boy. Ooh, ouch. That hurt. Heat. Schmutz. And how about a vice grip this time? 
There we go. A little bit of patience. Oh, I just that whole time I thought you were looking at it. All right. Well, regardless, it's loose now. That's one of three. So I'm just gonna keep working on these, and I'll get back to you here in a second. Wow, did that take far too long. Back to what we were originally doing, if I can find a way to weasel in here. There we go. Finally. Ugh. Ugh. It's moments like that that really just drive you nuts. Make you wonder why you're doing what you're doing. Anyway, finally got that off. Now we can take our wheel cylinder off, clean this up, throw this one back together. Woof. This one's all done. Nice and easy. Now we can move on to the rears, which are gonna be not so easy. But before I get to that, I'm gonna grease up my bearings, get my drum back on here and call this one good. I'm not gonna put my soft line on yet because there's another soft line behind the frame that uh, I couldn't find a part number for ahead of time. So I'm gonna bring that one in to the parts house and see uh, if I can't find one that, that matches up. Um, so I'll leave that off for now, but uh, yeah. Moving on to the back here, I'm gonna crack this one open, kind of explain the situation, what we got going on here. But uh, like I said, on the other side, a little more difficult on, on this end of the deal. Hammer. I always forget to bring a rag dummy and the all right now we'll come back to this one later okay so if you remember pretty hard to forget but these rear axles were just in terrible, terrible shape, locked up from all the rust. And unfortunately for me, uh, there's two pieces to these rear assemblies that are really just impossible to find and or very expensive. One piece that I'm alluding to is the wheel cylinder, very affordable on the fronts, very not affordable on the rears. Each one of these, I can't remember what uh, what the pricing was, but it was it was over $100 per wheel cylinder for the rears. Don't ask me why. It's literally so close to being the same, but also different enough where you can't interchange the front and rears. 
What I'm opting to do on the rears with these wheel cylinders is rebuild them. I have a rebuild kit that's about, I can't remember what it was, $6 or something like that. Because wheel cylinders, you know, the internals are pretty simple. It's the exterior that's like the expensive piece. But I'm going to rebuild these if they're too far gone, too pitted, too beat up, and the brakes don't function as they should, then I'll bite the bullet and pay to replace these. I can replace these with the brake assembly together. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and rebuild these first and see how they work. I'm, I really won't be losing anything by, by doing that, by taking a stab at that. So we're gonna do that for the wheel cylinders. The second piece that is uh, that I had mentioned before is the actual drum itself on these rears for the, for the three quarter and one ton trucks. It's a hefty gal and they don't make them anymore, at, at least not that I can find. Uh, if they do, I am sure they would just be so, so expensive. And that's why a lot of people resort to just rear end swapping these trucks rather than dealing with the stock setup because of parts. It's just, it's just tough to find the parts. So I'm gonna reuse those as well. I don't love the fact that I'm reusing them because they are so rough. However, I think they're still usable for now for a short term type of period. What I'd like to do is see if I can find one of these trucks as a, as a parts rig or something like that and rob the, uh, the drums off of a parts truck or you know something along those lines, picked up a used part so I'll be in better shape than the ones that I have. But for now, I'm just gonna put it back together, just get this thing on the road. I'm not taking it on a road trip or anything like that. I'm, you know, my plans for this truck as of right now is just to, just to cat it on down the street, you know, no state highways or anything like that, just, just simple driving. So let's get to this. What I'm gonna do is the same on the front. I'm gonna knock all the rust off, soak this down and brake clean. I'm gonna have to get this wheel cylinder off of here, which, yeah, I already busted this line off while I was taking this assembly off in the field, so I gotta rebuild a new brake line for this side, and then we'll jump into rebuilding this wheel cylinder. So, let's get to it. Wow. By far, my hardest fought battle of 2024 so far. The one side of the wheel cylinder came off fine, the other side was like pinched up against metal. So it was like a, a hot spot, I guess I'll call it for rust. This bolt literally fought all the way down to a nub before she broke loose. Lots of heat, lots of schmutz, lots of grinder, lots of vice grip, but I finally got it. Needless to say, I will be replacing these bolts, but now that that's over and I just burnt up an hour and about 500 calories, yes, I'm gonna get back to work. Okay, so here's what we're doing for the wheel cylinders. Right now, I just got it soaking down in some uh, diesel fuel, just trying to do the initial breakup. We're gonna tear this apart, and then I got a rebuild kit. Again, it was cheap, like six bucks or something, because the internals are pretty simple. It's just two little pucks, a series of springs, and then your seals, so. So here are your outer seals, your spring in the center, and then your outer seals. Did I say outer seals twice? Inner seals, outer seals. Save it for when we're done cleaning. In the meantime, we're gonna pull this out and tear it open and see how bad it is on the inside. It's gonna be nasty. So here's your outer seal, outer seal. On the inside, 
Oof. Just corrosion and old brake fluid is what that is. Oh boy. All right, so I'm just gonna take a screwdriver and just kind of get the bulk of this gunk out. And that's, that's what's coming out of there. Don't want to eat that, that's for sure. Mmm, so good and tasty. Mm, mm. All right, already looking better. Okay, so all I'm doing here is I got a old punch that kind of fits in here real nice, and you're just gonna give it some soft love taps. Okay, there it started to move. Turn it over to the other side. Do the same thing, just start getting it freed up. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of sandpaper because of the rust on the inside. Created a little bit of a ridge. The hope there is that it'll come out a little bit easier with that ridge gone. I gotta clean them up anyway, so might as well start sanding now. Just my initial thoughts on this, it actually doesn't look quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. A little bit of a ridge from, from the rust, but minimal pitting. It really doesn't look that bad down the board at all. All right, I'm thinking this is about to pop out, so I'm going to throw it in the vise. Just really lightly grab onto that. There it comes. Cool. So there's your old puck, your old spring, and your old inner seal. Now all we got to do is just clean up the inside of this as best we can. It's tough to tell on camera, but uh, it's actually really not that bad. It's just dirty. So I'm going to take a real fine grit sandpaper with some diesel fuel on it, sand her up, throw the new stuff in. Okay, now I'm probably gonna have to keep cleaning, but just to check my progress, all I'm looking for is to see if I can easily pass these pucks through the bore. My fingers were longer. And out the other side. If it binds up easy, like this one is, it means you still got cleaning to do. And actually, yeah, I can see some old material that that just pulled with it as I was pushing it through. So I still got more cleaning to do, so I'm just gonna Get back to that, just get it to a point where I'm comfortable with it, and then we'll put it back together. Okay, I think I got this to a point where I like it. Nice and clean. Passes through pretty easy, if I can push it on the other end. Okay, so with that, what I like to do is lube up my parts with a little bit of brake fluid, and just piece it back together. All right, we got our wheel cylinder, our two pucks. I just take a little bit of brake fluid, throw it in the cap, new seals and our new spring. Okay, so the way this works is pretty self-explanatory. You'll take your spring, the inner seal cups over it like that, and then the puck attaches there. So I'll start with the puck on one end, just throw that on one side. I'll get a little bit of brake fluid on my finger. Oh, it's a daisy. I got a little, got a little cream here on my finger. Oh, that's okay. I can take care of that, Mr. Dillham. And just kind of lube this up. I'll do the same thing on the bore. We'll start by pressing this down. And we'll do the same thing on this one. This one's gonna be capping the spring. And then our puck on the other end. It should be a little bit of pressure now with that spring in there. With that put back together, now you can take your outer seals and you're just gonna press these on the outside. All right, with that, this wheel cylinder is all rebuilt for about six bucks and we can throw it back on the truck. Hopefully it works, we'll throw it on, test it out, and if I'm having issues, then we can always, you know, bend over and buy the expensive part, but uh, I'd rather spend the six bucks and try it this way first. All right, with that, let's get these rear brakes on. I already got my wheel cylinder on and a couple pieces parts here set up, but now for the shoes.
<sighs> I hate this. <laughs> uh, those new springs are just tough to work with because they're just so new. <laughs> so anyway, that's put together. So I'm going to get to work on getting the uh, existing drum cleaned up and put back on here. I think I'm out of time for today, though. Yeah, so I'll be back on this tomorrow. But yeah, new shoes and springs are on. We'll move forward from here, but I got to clean up for now. Okay, let's see how this thing fits. Oh, you are a pig. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Oh, man. I'm not even close. I got my adjuster all the way backed out. Oh, God. Shoot. All right. My pads are binding up on the drums, and my adjuster is all the way backed in. So I think... I got an idea. Okay, so okay. So what I did here is I just shaved down this little nubby here, so it should give me a little more room to play. Should back that in just enough to, to get this drum on. Cause like I said, I wasn't it wasn't too far off. Ugh. It's not getting lighter. There we go. We're fitting nice now, so I got my platter of bearings. <laughs> on the rears here, your lubrication comes from your rear diff. All that fluid actually comes out this little snout here and lubricates all your bearings and such. So you don't need to grease them. However, I like to just, I don't know what the standard is, so weigh in if you could but the way that i do it is i just i lightly grease some pieces parts just to get it going and then once all that diff fluid works its way in it keeps everything lubricated from there but you don't want to you don't want to pack your bearings or anything like that i know that because it'll all mix in with your with your gear oil and it ain't supposed to be that way that's what i know so lucky for me i only have a little bit of grease left so i'm just gonna take what i got here and put on a glove that, that would help i put it in my pocket for a reason <sighs> these gloves are one size too small big hands and such all right a little bit of schmutz just a light coating nothing crazy yeah, let me know. I don't know. Too much, too little. Not supposed to use any at all. I don't know. Am I just supposed to, you know, pre-lube this with gear oil? That would be awfully messy, I think. Oh. Nice. Nice. Bearing. Locking ring. Okay, we'll lock that down. Ignore the little booger that I just put in there. That sucks. Get this back in. I remember to rag this time. So here's the situation down here. A couple things that are uh, standing out to me that need addressed. First being, I broke this hard line to my driver rear while taking this apart. So I need to bend up a new line there. But just as important, I also need to get this diff cover off because I was down here perusing when I brought the truck back and I noticed right here from this bolt to this bolt, this whole part of the cover was flipped up like a fork hit it and snagged it. And I, I know I had forks under here, but I was being pretty careful. I don't believe that was for me. I think that was from a long time ago, before I had the truck at least. I didn't notice after I had the forks under here, I didn't notice any sort of puddling going on like like I was the one that hit it. Because I think, I, I doubt this is going to have fluid in it. I think it's going to be dry from leaking out right here. I kind of, you know, I, I bent it back. I think the cover's going to be okay. I'll probably just have to 
be a little heavy on the gasket maker when I put it back together, but that's something that we're definitely going to take care of before we get it on the road. So I got to pop this cover off. And in order to do that, I got to get the rest of these brake lines off. Doubt it'll move, but we're going to try anyway. Okay, I'm going to snip this line. Good Lord. All right. You know the drill. Heat schmutz, heat schmutz, heat schmutz. Stip stop, stip stop, stip stop. Ah, man. There we go. I said about cutting lines well I cut that one I'm lucky that didn't hit me in the face good lord that'll wake you up here's the other end of the line I bet you that popped because can you tell how closed up that line is that's why you got to replace your rubber lines because over time they swell shut and it won't let fluid down and back the tube that's probably why that blew up even though i had it cut it, it was it's like probably just sealed shut from from the inside anyway all right let's keep going here oh, i'm not gonna lie y'all i am getting whooped from these brake lines just rusty parts so i made up this silly little bracket just a silly little thing because the other one was just basically welded to this frame in such bad shape. It's a crude little thing, but it'll work. All right, <laughs> that burned up so much time. Back to what we were originally doing, popping this diff cover off. If you think I smacked this bracket with a hammer to get it out of the way for a socket, no, I didn't. Uh, definitely drained, which isn't great, but it looks clean. It doesn't look like uh, there's a bunch of metal shavings everywhere from being beat up. But here's a better look at what we got in here not too shabby so all i'm gonna do is because it is a little a little dirty so i'm just gonna soak her down with brake clean and fill her back up i did also forget to mention that uh it's actually stamped right here conveniently 1966 dana 4110 so it's a 410 gear ratio uh, which means it's gonna be you know this is a pulling truck it's not gonna be great at highway speeds which is no surprise like I said, just gonna clean this up, clean up the gasket area, and slap this thing back together. But uh, I'm actually out of time for the day, so I'll see you back here in the morning. Hey, update, where are we sitting? Well, I did some YouTube magic, just, you know, just got some things checked off the list. I cleaned all this up, made my own gasket, and pinned that all back up. The other thing that I already went ahead and did, I made up this new hard line that runs to the driver's side drum and replace the hardware up there, bleeder screw and all that. If you want to see how to make up a steel line, I actually go through it step by step in the last video that I posted. I'll throw the link to that video on in the info card box if you want to go ahead and catch up. But all I'm doing now is filling the diff. I don't know what the capacity is. Usually it's two or three quarts, but since this, you know, lubricates all the bearings and all that, I'm not sure if it's a little bit more than that. I got a gallon of, uh, it's not Rotella, it's Gear Oil 8090, I think is what I had in the garage. I'm not sure what these Danas take, but I'm sure it's going to be fine. So I'm going to let this fill. Obviously, it's a slow roll because Gear Oil is thick. You're going to take that thick. Huh? So I'm going to let this fill up, and in the meantime, I'm going to go back to the engine bay, and we're going to take a look at that master cylinder. Okay, so here's the earth. 
here's our master cylinder. This is an original part, and if I were to take my guess, considering I'm a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. It's probably not going to be the best, if it works at all. So I'm going to opt just to replace it, just in the sense that this powers my clutch and my brake. You need both of those things in order to drive. So I'm not going to mess with it. The part was... You know, it wasn't cheap, but it wasn't bad. I, we're just not going to screw with it and throw a new one on. The problem is these hard lines running to the master cylinder look rough. So I'm thinking we're going to have to uh, give this little fella some, some love and affection. All right, enough of that nonsense. They're both loose. This one's still a little stubborn. There she goes. Here's the old master cylinder. And uh, watch this. Here's your pistons. This side is the clutch. Nice and free. That actually feels pretty good. This is the brake side down here. <laughs> locked solid so I'm glad I bought a new one which is right here matches up quite well but in order to use this new one I need to bench blade it so I came up with a little plan here how I'm gonna do this so I've, I obviously have two sides in here as we are pumping this piston back and forth, it's gonna be sucking fluid through those holes, but they're two separate sides. So I have to bleed this one and this one, but it's the same reservoir. So in order to do that, I have a little piece of scrap brake tube from my cutoff in the back. Screw this in here and I'll throw my clear tube down the reservoir. And as I am pumping, it's gonna be sucking from the reservoir the whole time until all the air bubbles are gone. All right, I'm not seeing any more air bubbles, so I think this is all set to throw back on the truck, and we should be good to go. So I'm gonna get this thing on, and then unfortunately I'm still waiting on parts, but I'll get into that in a minute. Ugh, this hood. I should have taken it off when I started this whole thing. I can't tighten this down yet because I still have a brake line that I'm waiting on. I can't find the right part, so I'm just gonna switch some things up tomorrow, I think, and, and just make it work. But there's a soft line that attaches to this brake line that I can't seem to find. So I'm not gonna take this plug out yet. If I'm not gonna take that plug out, I can't suck this in. So this is gonna sit here how it is for now. Other than that, 
we're going to bleed the brakes and bleed the clutch, and then hopefully we're going to be stabbing this thing on the road. So I will meet you all back here then so we can wrap this puppy up. <sighs> Welcome back to where the heck are we on this thing? <laughs> so I bled the brakes, and that should have been a quick process, but to be honest, that was a few days ago. So I'm trying to remember where we're at because started the bleeding process and I was just chasing my tail. Leaks and air bubbles and couldn't get it working with my pneumatic bleeder so I had to bring a buddy over. Thank you J-Rod for stopping by for helping me push the pedal. I don't need friends, they disappoint me. But we got it licked, I think. So let me take you through kinda where we're at, where we're sitting. The rears, we currently have a full line going across the back because I discovered pretty quickly that we had a pretty severe leak. Some pinholes, rusty lines and whatnot. Why do you look so sad, dude? So I fixed up a new hard line back there, continued the bleeding process, basically had to start over. Moving on to under the hood. Master cylinder's working out great. I'm glad I replaced that. However, the business starts when you get below it. See that right there in a little uh, union? Well, here's where it gets complicated. Let me jump under the truck for this one. So here we are under the truck, the master cylinder's up there. And on the old system, this hard line right here came down to a soft line. I showed pictures of it before. I didn't think it was gonna be that big of a deal, so I didn't really note it, but I couldn't find a replacement part. That soft line hooked up here and ran down to this soft line which goes to my front driver side brake but there was a T there so it was almost like a banjo style fitting and it teed off and it would connect to this existing line that would go to my passenger side drum and then it would tee off and go to this hard line which this is a new hard line that runs to my rears. That soft line is now unobtainium, can't find it. I wish I had it on my person, but truth be told, I brought it to a custom hydraulic hose and brake line shop, and uh, I ended up leaving it there because I knew I was trashing it, um, and they were pretty far drive from me, and I left it with them to see if they could make it. And they said, well, yeah, we can make it, but uh, it's gonna be about $160, and in that little eight inch hose there's going to be six different fittings i said no thank you so i left that there went on to my local store here in napa and uh thank you to the avon napa for helping me out but we got her cobbled together so i'll walk you through what we ended up doing here so what we ended up doing here is from this hard line we did a one in two out t fitting to two soft lines because this needs to be a soft line here. It, it, I was debating making it hard lines, but it just wasn't gonna work out that way. So one side of the T loops and goes to my front, so it feeds my fronts, which I know, again, pretty janky setup here, but I had to make it work. Uh, this hard line runs to another one in, two out T that runs to my passenger side, and that serves the front. The other side of this T, soft line down to my new hard line that runs all the way to the back and feeds that. Uh, this was another area that I discovered a leak. There's a union over there. I still need to attach this to the frame, but she's going to work. So we should be all square on this front. That was really the majority of the, uh, the time that I had invested into this thing because I, I wanted to make it right. I didn't want it to be too cobbled together. I was really pushing to, to be able to, to put the original style hose that came off of it, but I just couldn't figure it out. So that's what we ended up going with. I think it's gonna work out just fine. But then, you know, you started the bleeding process and that was a whole nother whole nother process. The other thing that ended up working out actually is the clutch side of things. The hard line was good to go and the slave cylinder, to my surprise, I bought a new one I had already, but the slave cylinder ended up freeing up and working properly. Don't know how. Here's a little clip of the moment where it got freed up.
yeah, she was locked pretty tight, but, uh, but it works. There's pressure to it. We're going to see if it actually actuates the clutch, which I think it should, because I feel pressure. The plan is now that everything is set up as best as I think I can get it. I'm gonna fire this thing up while it's still on stands without any wheels on it. I'm gonna see if the clutch works, if I can shift through the gears and actually take it in and out of gear, that would be great. And we're gonna see if I stomp on the pedal, if we've got brake pressure and my shoes are working. Obviously that won't tell me anything about the fronts because it's rear wheel drive, so I need to have it on the ground for that. But while we were bleeding it and uh, it was a two man crew and J-Rod was pushing on the pedal, I could feel my shoes pushing in and out. So I'm pretty confident. So let's fire this thing up. You guys are gonna be my eyes in the back. I'm gonna be shifting through the gears. We're gonna see if we can get this thing in and out of gear and see if the brakes work. All right, up my battery up. See if we can get this thing fired up. It runs really nice now, but I still gotta get Still got to get a muffler on this thing. It's it's pretty ridiculous how loud this is. All right, so shifter into gear here. This should be first gear. Letting out the clutch. She's spinning. I figured that was gonna work. How about second gear? Oh yeah, she's working. Third. Oh, that's reverse. I guess I don't know my shift pattern. I should probably... There we go. That might be... That might be fourth. Because I think it's a four speed. Well, I'm not sure, but probably better off finding out on the road. Let's put it back in first. All right, how about brakes? Yep, they're grabbing. All right, that's good news. So we got a working clutch, we got working brakes, but that's obviously in the air. So let's see if we can't get this thing on its four paws and see if I can track it back and forth in the driveway here. All right, she's on the ground. Let's fire this thing up and cross our fingers, hope that she can go into gear and stop. That would be great. You ready? All right, here we go. It is starting to rain quite a bit too, so I'm hoping, hoping I can get this over with and get it going. That should be first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's first gear. I think this was reverse. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know. My brakes might be a little soft. Oh, I got brakes. Yeah, they're a little soft, but I got brakes. Ah, oh, cool. Back to reverse. I probably should have warmed this up a little bit more before I started driving it. Alright, let's actually get in the gear here and not hit the garage. Yeah, I got brakes. All right, that's about all I can do right now too because I'm not 
opening that gate up because my dog's back here. The brakes could probably stand to be bled again. And I might do that before I take this on the road. But it definitely has brakes. Yeah, all right, cool. There we go. Ah. Hello, lady. <laughs> all right. We got a running, driving pickup truck. I know it only went a couple feet, but uh, we're there. So we got some steps to take. Unfortunately, I know I really wanted to get this on the road at the end of this video, but here's the deal. It runs and drives and stops, which is great, but I still have other things that I need to do. I think I need to bleed the brakes again because it, they still feel pretty soft. So I think uh, there might still be some air trapped in there, you know, that's common. I didn't, uh, I didn't have all day and all night to, to bleed the brakes when my friend was here, but I might get them back over here just to do a once over, just so I'm safe when I get out there. The other thing is there is no way I am putting this on the road without having a muffler on it. Now it's really starting to rain. There's no way I'm putting this thing on the road without having a muffler on it. It is loud. It's just gonna draw attention to the wrong people. And I don't want that. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get a ticket the first time I take this thing out. That's basically what I'm saying. So in the next video, it's going to be real cut and dry, real simple. All I'm going to be doing is throwing a little exhaust system on this. So it's quiet or quieter and we're going to stab it on the road. I'm hoping to have a little bit of fun with the uh, cinematography on that video. So hopefully it's going to be a good one. Stick around. It's going to come out next week promise. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and stick around because that'll be coming up here shortly. On the note of subscribing, I wanted to throw out a general thank you to everyone that's been following along. The channel just passed 5,000 subscribers and I am super, super happy about that. Very, very grateful. When I started this whole thing, I really didn't intend to be at the point that I am right now, as far as timeline goes. We're about a year and a half in, 5,000 subscribers. That's more than I could ever ask for at this point. So thank you so much for tuning in and subscribing, liking, commenting, all that fun stuff. I really, really appreciate it. We're on Facebook, Instagram, the Tiki Takis, and obviously YouTube. So stick around with me. We got a lot coming out. I will see you all in the next one, but always remember, don't be afraid to grab that wrench and get after it yourself. See you next time. Mm -hmm.